What is good guys and welcome to today's very special video. You can probably see behind me a good hint of where we are, but I have my beautiful Yashio factory S15 with me and I was going for this nice drive through Yokohama and I ended up here at the Nismo Omori factory. And from time to time they change what they have on display there. And what's inside, what they have today is gonna completely blow your mind. I have never seen these cars up close and personal before and I cannot wait to get in there and show you what they have. So, let's jump in and take a look. Pretty cool that when you first walk into the Nismo Mori factory, you get to see this entire car up on its side, which still has its engine and everything in there. And you can just see everything that's going on in it. Literally, it's a physical real car on the wall for you to just look at. The turbo down there is huge. You're not sure if you can see that with the massive wastegate in there. It is ginormous. So yeah, a lot of people think this is just like an empty shell, but if you get close and actually look through the Perspex glass, you can see the whole motor and everything just chilling there. It's, it's insane. Anyways, that aside, like the cockpit is so cool. <laughs> see the Willens harnesses just like drooping down in there because the whole car's on, its, on the wall. Anyways, that aside, that thing is very, very cool. Um, we're gonna get to these three cars here in a little bit. What I want to look at first is the new RV26s that they have here. So you can get brand new long motor N1 RV26 um, engines now. So obviously long motor means you're not getting cold side, hot side or accessories. You're just getting the bare motor as it is that you see now. For the N1 R34, looking about 13 grand USD. Australian, that's probably like 15 grand. And then for the 32, 33, you're looking at about the same price, identical price actually, 1,320,000 yen. That's pretty good, 1.3 mil yen. It's pretty good, honestly. For $13,000 for an entirely brand new long motor, I mean, it's really not that bad considering where the price is at for these right now. And obviously this is heritage pricing stuff, so that's why they're pretty expensive too. Moving on to there you guys will know about the r series engines right so it's about fifty thousand dollars usd it's about 47 actually 46 for the r2 engine which is rated at 450 ps forged internals bunch of cool nismo goodies intake manifold all that kind of stuff right now this is the f sport series you can get an f sport standard which is 2.7 stroked engine suited for 470 ps power which is like 470 horsepower really um, at $58,000 USD. If you want to go that little bit extra baller, get the 71, uh, like $71,000. It's all $72,000 roughly. Rated at 500 PS, that's just like without you tuning or you know, like that's just with the Nismo baseline. So it can do more power. It's just saying like that's where they're rating it at from out of the box kind of thing. 2.8 liter stroked Nismo built RV26. Thing looks sexy. Got like some special crinkle coat going on there. You of course get the most expensive part of this engine, which is the Nismo badge right there. Pretty cool to look at. Those badges, man, Whew. worth a lot of money. You can see them there on anything that's a built motor from Nismo. And we have seen these motors before. This motor is a very special motor, as you can see. This was used, I think, in the GT race series. Um, there's no injectors. Well, there's actually double injectors. Injector rail on the top, injector rail on the bottom. Very special engine, twin turbo. I love these flat rock covers. Very, very cool. Uh, dry sumped. And uh, this one, I don't really know much about this motor. Very, very cool. That aside, one thing I wanted to show you 
is you can get full carbon Z tune body kit stuff for 34s. And just the front bumper is $5,000. The undercover is $6,000. The fender set is $5,300. The hood is $6,300. And the diffuser, $10,000. <laughs> For full carbon fiber that's insane mind blown all right let's go look at these cars just look at how beautiful this thing is guys i don't even know where to start so i guess old school group c race car and this is called the r8 9c number 23 driven by hoshino hoshino san and suzuki san were the main two drivers for this thing for oh, that wang game it's so beautiful I think one of my favorite features has to be these SSR Nismo collaboration wheels from back in the day. So nice. That old Nismo logo there. Running Brembo brakes. And this thing has a V8 in there. It's twin turbo. Do you see the massive wastegate just chilling there? It's insane. Look at the other side and you'll just be completely mind blown. Another look in there and you can see that wastegate there with like, I think that's the intercooler. And then maybe the intercooler's further up the back there or that's part of the radiator system. But this has the VRH38 V8. So fairly, uh, fairly famous engine, I'm pretty sure. A lot of guys actually, some people even get that motor um, exported out of Japan and some people swap it in. I think, who was it that put it in a Skyline? I can't remember. No, was it Astasia? I can't remember. I remember watching, I think it was, um, oh, what's his name? The guy that works with uh, Mighty Car Mods a lot. Anyways, and as you guys can see, they've got the other two variants of a very similar car. Now, this one, I think, was the Daytona Championship car, the Daytona 24-hour race. It's a little bit different in the design, and I think I prefer this one just because it's more like... It seems more aggressive, like the wing design, how the wing is actually separate on the sides. There's that gap there. And then the dual kind of circle headlights here, I just think look way cooler than the like, the single, big single one with the little tiny one here, right? I don't know why, but I just prefer it. So this is the R9 1 CP. And yeah, it was the Daytona 24 hour race overall champion vehicle. Very cool. Once again, running those nice SSR wheels. Very cool. You can see in there, it seems like they actually have different, they're not like standard Brembo brakes. Carbon fiber discs, hard to see. Now let's see, is there a wastegate chilling up in here? I don't see anything. No, I don't know. Let's see, what do we got here? This wing design, as you can see, it's actually connected to the side of the body here, which is kind of crazy. Just trying to look up really quickly what kind of engine was in this thing. So this this had the VRH35Z. And it says it was twin turbo. I'm trying to see if we can see those spoolie boys in here somewhere, but it's hard. And that diff is so cool. Well, it's not a diff. I think it's like a transaxle where the transmission's like built into the axle. I'm trying to see. Come on, where are you guys hiding at? Oh, they've got a piece of cardboard in there like hiding it so you can't really see in there. It's really dark, but very similar design engine set up to this, I guess. That wing, the wing design in this definitely is cool how it blends into the body. And you can see like these have these little like scoops there to get some air into the cabin and the engine bay compared to this one didn't. It's a bit different there. The rear end on this, geez. The size of those rear tires is just nuts. Whew, boy. Very, very cool. It seems like halfway through they added that little scoop because it's still carbon, right? Compared to this one where it's actually all painted and blended into the body. Looks like they were like, oh crap, we need a vent. And they just kind of glued it on there last minute. There's a rear end on this. Like you can really tell like how the body was completely differently designed in the rear here compared to that one. Still very, very cool. The rear diffuser on this one's a bit different too. Super sick. Oh man, I'd kill to be able to drive one of these one day. Hoshino and Suzuki-san drove this one too, as well as Hasemi and someone from Switzerland. 
Olo Fasson. Don't know if I pronounced that right. People who know. Oh, wow. It's cool. Interior is sick too. These vents on the front here are completely different design as well compared to the older one there. Big scoops. Now this one over here is the R9 2 CP. Another Group C car. You can see the headlights are a little bit different design compared to this one as well. Doesn't have the second little light down here, just the one circle up the top. Looks cool. Very cool actually. And I guess the main sponsor for this one was most likely HP, which is kind of weird. Well, it's not really weird, it's just like, you know, I miss seeing the big Calsonic logo there. Hewitt Packard. Hewlett Packard. Oh, I thought it was always Hewitt Packard. There you go, learn something new. And um, you can see twin exhaust here. One will be for the actual thing, and you can kind of see a turb skis and a wastegate in there. I don't know if you guys can see it on camera, but twin turbo once again, this one. And this wing design is a little bit different again to the other one. It's not identical, it's a tiny bit different. This thing, once again, had the VRH35Z twin turbo that delivered more than 800 horsepower, the rear wheels. Very cool. Yeah. I really do like looking at the technology for these uh, air pistons that lift the whole car up and stuff. Find that stuff very cool. I'd like to have that on my track car one day. Very, very cool. Should we do a little sneaky iPhone light, have a look through the vent? You guys can see intercoolers and stuff like that going on in there. Very cool. Oh, you can see the wastegate hiding in there. See it in between the, in the vents there? Very cool. There you guys go. The turbos on these are huge. Just like kind of what we saw on the car that's mounted on the wall. Oh, that's very cool. I didn't notice that. This is your mirror on the left side. But on this car, they mounted it up on the windshield, which you pro sorry, on the side of the car, which you probably couldn't see. And the mirrors on these side are on the right. God, that looks kind of weird. See how the mirror's just kind of bolted on the side there? And they put it into the fender on this side. On that side, they just put it both on the sides of the car. This one's the same design, I guess. Kind of looks weird with the mirror just chilling there. Gosh, man, the cabins in these just look so cool. Yeah, there you go. Mirrors right there. Cool. Now over here, it's arguably one of the rarest skylines in existence. The R34 GTR Nismo Z tune. Um, I think the last one that sold, that was available and for sale a year or so ago, sold for over $200,000 USD. These things are worth their weight in gold. It is insane how much these things sell for now. And it just makes me want to cry because I guess I was born too late. <laughs> I wish I was, uh, but then at the same time, I'm also happy that I'm in the period that I'm in now because I think it's also very interesting because I believe car manufacturers are gonna start producing more sports cars again because I think the younger generation want them again and I think they're gonna finally listen. I'm hopeful, I'm optimistic. Come on guys, you can't hate me for that. But yeah, seeing a Z-Tune up close like this, in person, is so nice. All the like, you know, the features and stuff with the red interior, which is like a suede by the way, or Alcatara, Alcantara, can't pronounce that. Very, very cool. Some electric thing we don't care about. And now, this thing here, I guess, is like, you know, the, the 35 kind of variant of their new GT series race car. Now, I can't remember what series this particular one raced in. It says Autobacks on there, so it's most likely like gonna be the, uh, it'll say here, GT500, yeah, I was thinking that. There you go. GT500 series car, completely different, like built car entirely based off the 35 chassis. That booty though. Damn, she thick. Very nice. I do like that. And of course, one other really cool factor about the Nismo Mori factory is you get to see the glass wall straight into the workshop here where they are literally working on customers' cars or building other future race cars and things like that. Yo, is that a 400R up there? That may be a 400R up on the hoist up there. That's very cool. 
Anyways, a lot of super rare cars here, especially these ones here. So sexy, man. Nismo Mori factory, genuine. GTRs. Look how shiny they are. Like, I know there's a lot of glass reflection happening right now. But you can also see just how much the light is bouncing off that gunmetal grey. And of course, other aspects are. You can order engines and stuff. And a lot of other Nismo parts are fully available here that you can get your hands on if you're visiting Japan. I've seen people take carbon fiber intake, uh, sorry, charge pipe kits and inlet pit kits home, steering wheels. I mean, I don't know if you guys ever want to pay $1,500 for one of these, but still, very, very cool. Here's my wheels, here's my lug nuts. These things, they even provide gloves so you can feel how, um, how light these are. Very cool titanium strut braces. And of course, lots of all the other usual Nismo products and harnesses and things like that available too. Just so you guys know, people looking for 34 headlights, one headlight for a GTR, 34, is 2.1K, one headlight. <laughs> it's crazy. Of course, you can get clusters and stuff now too. They've actually remade some of the older clusters so they're going to be available, especially like these gauge clusters for your 33s and stuff now. They're remaking a lot of the older ones and bringing them back out. But yeah, so cool to see this kind of stuff in the workshop. The dyno room up there. I think that's the road testing room. Very, very cool. And just look at that line. That ass though. Am I right, boys? All right, so I just jumped out into the car park because it's about time to head home. And I spotted this beautiful thing over here. Damn, man. So cool. It's always, it always blows my mind some of the things that just are sitting in the car park here. Very, very clean and nice. I'm trying to like hold my jacket open so the wind doesn't hit the camera and make terrible noises. And damn. Left hand drive too. So this came from America. Wait, what is this technically? Yeah, it's a 240Z then. It's not an S30. Very cool. Yo, left hand drive Z. Probably because there's more of these in the States that you can find that are rust free than in Japan. I mean, I mean you're always going to have some kind of rust. But uh, yeah, I'd say it's probably easier to find one of these in the States right now than in Japan. Anyways, that aside, let's go jump in my beautiful Yashio factory pink S15 and head home. You guys know we got to hit gate on the way home. God, I love this car. Man, what an absolute treat it was to see those cars up close and personal. It blows my mind when you just like, because I'm a real technical person, so I was looking at all the technical stuff and how things were done and why they did things this certain way or just assuming and guessing why they did that and just seeing the amount of attention to detail and things on those cars is just mind blowing, especially like through the years and how you can see like with the older one moving up to the newer one and then once again obviously looking at the new GT500 series car how much they've progressed over the years but still there are some key principles that they kept the same you know what I mean like I don't know just being able to go through and look at that stuff and just drool at all the expensive engines and stuff at the Nismo Mori factory is always good and I think we're going to visit there a little bit more often and keep an eye on what kind of cars they're putting out on display because it just seems like lately when I've been checking and stuff there's been some really cool stuff that we've missed out on because they have this really weird kind of time schedule of when the place is open as well um, so like they're not just open every single day so you need to keep an eye on that as well and check the website and make sure that you're actually going there when they're actually open. So there's all that aside guys, tell me in the comment section, what was your favorite car that you saw? I mean, I, I think a lot of people are gonna probably say the Z tune, but I have to say that original older Cal Sonic uh, race car was just mm, so good. Group C car. Anyways, all that aside, thanks for watching guys. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Smash that like button like I just said. Write us a comment, what was your favorite car? It really does help with my videos and getting more views and other people seeing them on the on the platform so definitely please do that and show your support and i will see you all in the next one peace out jamata